Welcome back to the show. You guys, it's BFF Friday with my BFFs, Colleen and Lisser. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. But we have very important guests joining us, Elijah Walbrook and Ian Bradford. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Hi, buddies. Thank you so much. This this is an exciting fucking time for you guys because uh, they just debuted their single, Mr. Zero Gravity. Um, It's available where tomorrow, just to let people know directly where to go. Everywhere. Everywhere. So Spotify, iTunes. Yeah, iTunes. Tidal, uh, Deezer, Amazon Music, Amazon Music, everywhere, everywhere that we can think of. Okay, so listen, ladies and gentlemen, those listening, it's really important, not only because I love these guys, I was there for the making of, but their music is fucking amazing. When I say I put it in my car, when I drive everywhere, I, I'm not even lying. The music is so good. Um, you guys, talk about how this even came about. First of all, where did you guys meet? We met in high school. We were in we were uh, band kids, and we met through marching band. And uh, I don't know. Did did you meet me or I? So <laughs> I heard him speaking right before a halftime show at one of the games sophomore year, and then I approached him and tried to like joke and stuff like that, thinking I was like, oh, this guy's approachable. Let <laughs> me make a friend. I see if I can make a friend. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, worked out pretty well. Yeah. So, oh. And uh, four years later, we're sitting here. Mm-hmm. And then I got to be the one of the lucky ones because I got to quarantine with you guys, and um, which I talked about earlier in the show that a lot of people... <laughs> A lot of people saw our TikToks and said, you know, oh, my God, Evan really grew up. Yeah, I was a little confused because I've seen Evan and we we are not twins. You ain't even from the same planet. That's you know? true. Yeah. <laughs> but you were referred to also as a national treasure. That's true. I was Amen. also referred to as a big, goofy kid. So two ends of the spectrum. <laughs> totally. The single, Mr. Zero Gravity, it's one of my favorites on the EP. So you guys, how did you come about... Uh, started even writing what made you guys go like okay we don't want to play poker with our these old people we want to fucking mm-hmm. write music and and do this well one day we were driving home and we listened to this song called daffodils by mark ronson and uh we kind of looked at each other and we were like we could record this <laughs> and maybe make it our own and then uh somewhere around the corner uh i was like hey I have these songs that I've written just in my basement just for fun. You know, I thought they would just kind of stay on my laptop for a while. But uh, I showed it to him, and evidently you you seem to like them I enough did. to actually do something with them. So uh, we started actually recording in the middle of quarantine. We were kind of done just playing video games and sitting around doing nothing. So we uh, took some songs and... Uh, just had fun with it and create some music and I mean this is where you guys are a great team because you both bring your special talents together what made you Elijah say you know what I'm ready I can front man this I can I can sing um I don't know it's kind of just like a uh hike up the skirt and do it kind of thing there was never there was no like build up to it I was never just like oh man I really want to be a singer (laughs) like It was Elijah, you were a drummer for a while, right? Yeah. Still is a drummer. Totally. He he drums on this EP and he also he's also singing on the EP for those. So this is not like a front man waiting to like you know, come out like as a singer, you're a musician. He's a musician, but right. just, it said, you know what? I can take the lead and, and, and sing the songs. So were you nervous going into it? Because I know that you saw my performance at your 18th birthday party, <laughs> and I rap and dance, both of you. And I know how proud you guys are, but, um, it was nerve wracking for me. I can't even fucking imagine. Yeah, it was, it was like, I was super nervous because like I had I've never been a vocalist on like a mm-hmm. serious project before so I you know I put a lot of expectations on myself that you know that's harder isn't it sometimes the expectations yeah. you put on yourself than other people yeah absolutely and you knocked it out of the park yeah. I was I was so like, I'm super impressed I was I was fucking blown yeah. I was like oh my god really Elijah's fucking, fucking voice is amazing the first time you heard it Ian we were like oh this is gonna work mm-hmm. I was just happy that I didn't have to say <laughs> <it>. <laughs> He's I mean, like, oh, it's working, and I don't... This is great. I stay in the shower to totally. sing, and that's it. <laughs> luckily, luckily, you know, the a common trope about, like, indie bands like us is that it's less so about, like, producing beautiful vocals as it is just, like, making beautiful music totally. all around, you know? Well, guess what? You did both. Yeah. Again, the uh, single is called Mr. Zero Gravity. It's one of my favorites on the EP. What is it about Mr. Zero Gravity? 
How do you mean? What is the song? Like, what is it about? Because, you know, you can take it a bunch of different ways. Like, sometimes I'll be like, oh, my God, it's about love. And sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, I'm tripping my balls off right now. <laughs> so did you guys have like a, an idea when you were writing it as to, like, where you were going with the meaning? I think this is for you because I just kind of sat in my basement and uh, just tried to record some music. And then you had the idea of calling it Mr. Zero Gravity. So I... I can't even tell you where the title came from. Like, it was the first one that I had a name for, and I, I don't even know why. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, it's like uh, any any like musician can tell you that like if you're listening to something, you could hear like certain words that just like kind of resonate like in your stomach, you know? Yeah. And like that was kind of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but regarding the meaning, you can ask anybody who's like listened to the song, and it could mean anything different, it's you know, because it's about like that thing that makes you feel like you can float, you know, mm-hmm. that makes you feel weightless. So, one hundred percent, Spencer. So tell us on it, Spencer. How did goat. it happen? Um, and from what band? So people know. Uh, Periphery. Uh huh. They're very different from us, Periphery, but um, Spencer. We met him a few years ago, and we kind of developed a really cool friendship, and then um. We were all struggling, like, writing something to work on the bridge of the song. So we were like, well, let's see what Spencer can do. And then, like, he kind of knocked it out of the park. So we were just like, all right, he'll just feature and it'll be an awesome summer hit. So, I mean, that's got to be kind of fun to get someone that you admire and work with them. That leads me to, like, in the future, like, who are your gets? Like, who you were like, oh, I'd love to collaborate with so-and-so. Or who would you love if you had a wish to come true to approach and say, "Will you guys open for me?" Ooh. Mm. I think that you that's know, how I hold you wrong. You can have different <laughs> answers. Uh, well, I think I, I don't mean to speak for him, but I think that we both have a certain golden grail artist. Mm-hmm. We definitely, we're big fans of Tame Impala. We saw them at Lollapalooza this past year. I think it's safe to say, and not to speak for us, but uh, it's definitely in our top five concerts. It was profound, honestly. Really? Yeah. Very profound. We're so gonna put it out in the universe. Yeah. Who did you guys grow up loving? Like, who inspired you musically? Listen to a lot of uh, Stevie Wonder. Yes. Listen to some Prince. Yes. Uh, a lot of Beatles too. But uh, you know, as I got older, went through my emo phase. Listened to a lot of Green Day. But uh, now we definitely love dance music. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. No, disco is what is what's taking us. Around. Okay. No. Now, when I was younger, though, it's weird because the older I've gotten, the more I've gotten into older music. Mm-hmm. But like, I was probably like 11 years old, and I heard a Muse song on the radio, and like they're the reason that like. I got into music, mm-hmm. um, but it's funny because I was only listening to like contemporary stuff, um, and like even like Lincoln Park and stuff. I I went through my emo phase of music when I was like <laughs> sure. ten, eleven years old. Everybody's absolutely. And then yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, the older I get, the more I'm appreciative of like old disco, like seventies, Steve, like it. Stevie Wonder, like Ian said. You know, I know. I hear you guys playing that. I'm like, yes. And also, I hear I sometimes hear Janet Jackson and Madonna, which surprised me. Yeah. Big Whitney Houston fan. <laughs> Absolutely. No, for real. Yeah. I get you. I'm hearing you. Like everything you're hearing from upstairs in the. Yeah. yeah. Or, or by the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. I mean, there's a reason that pop music is pop Absolutely. music, right? Yeah. Pop music. It's, it's true. When you said Muse is the thing that inspired you to get into music, what in particular? I don't know what it was. Well, I listened to that song, Nights of Sidonia, and. It's, what is it like six minutes long it's like six just minutes like yeah ridiculous mm-hmm. like crazy like space very opera. few words yeah Astronaut. like there's not even a lot of yeah. lyrics um i don't know what it was but i was like this song is sick <laughs> and then uh, um I, I don't really know how the story goes from there i just know that like i can play through on the drums like i know by heart like most of their songs like collectively right um and that's like what taught me mm. like how to get good at the drums like that's what oh, taught wow. me how to like that's actually like play the instrument and do you think from watching your dad at all because you've been on tour pretty much your whole life was there that kind of desire of like oh you know i can do that or did that not cross your mind growing up um i'm a leo so i just like attention <laughs> <laughs> i don't <laughs> Lies, Colleen. Lies. That's We're the, wearing leopard and heels over here. Right. <laughs> By the way, that's the greatest fucking that's cute. truthful answer. Where do you guys see yourself going next? What are the goals besides opening for your your dream, you know, performer? Sure. Well, 
as almost as soon as we finished, we started making new music because mm-hmm. we started and we were like, we, we don't want to stop. Mm-hmm. We love just experimenting. We love just finding new sounds that we really enjoy. And I think on top of that, we just love listening to music. So I think the more we can create uh, of it, the more fun we'll have. Mm-hmm. Creating is the fun part, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you see? You see same thing? Just create more music? Keep going? Never stop. Oh, mm-hmm. I love that. I do. Do you guys have any... Any, I mean, not at this age, because you guys are young and bright-eyed and ready to go get them, but is there anything that you go like, oh, I'm a little scared of blank? At this age, at this stage, do you have fear of failure, fear of success ever enter your, or does not matter, you're just going? I think I don't know enough to be scared, which is uh, probably the scariest part, but, uh, you know. <laughs> that's the clean fear. part. That's yeah. the clean part. I'm, uh, I'm too stupid to be scared right now, right. so that's kind of nice. I'll, I'll live in that for a little bit before I actually have any fears. I get that. I wish I yeah, had that. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, sure. exactly. I have no reason to be scared as long as I know that, like, both of us are like have our hearts in it. Yep. As yeah. long as that's the case, and as long as we're both aware of that, there's really nothing to be afraid of. And and talk about the uh, the whole concept of not having a studio or a record label, I should say, come in and overpower you, control you. It's got to be. You don't know the difference yet in your career, but did it already feel free to not have those kind of super people? It was you? nice to kind of do whatever we want. Right. We. I, we had certain tools. We were like, what can we do with it? We didn't have any like real rules to like what we wanted to do. I mean, we had people that we could talk to about like things we wanted to do. Cause obviously we don't know everything, but, uh, mm. we were able to kind of do whatever we want, which I think any artist is kind of a fan of. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. It's true. We had the freedom to make music on our own time. Mm-hmm. That's like the biggest thing. Yeah. And we are also not going to be expected to pay back like a hundred grand to make mm-hmm. a freaking album, you know, like exactly. So do you guys have touring in the future? Do you see guys self doing some live performances? I think we we're ready to do that. I that think we've lovely. heard the music <laughs> enough. I think we're, we're ready to show other people. I think concerts are where the music connects to other people the most. So, and where can people follow you guys on Instagram and your social media? Pink Laces Music on just about everything. We even have a website, pinklacesmusic.com. And then, you know, you follow our personals because, you know, we post the promotional stuff and also stuff about our personal lives. So. <laughs> I mean, can you guys imagine the... Listen, I can't wait. To, uh, what can't you wait for, Lisser? To do Who Would You Rather with them. <laughs> I, like, I can't wait till we can go to their concert. <clears throat> I... I I have so much to say. Like, I can't wait. I know. I can't wait, too. I'm really, really proud of you guys. Not I'm only, Not only just to know you and love you guys, but you guys put out amazing music. Yeah. Pink Laces. Make great. sure you follow them at Pink Laces Music. Awesome. Anything else you guys want to say before we take a commercial break and come back and play a little game? We're just very happy that you guys are fans of it. Love it. 